I like sucking, but I ain't gay. Legit fat podcast. Fuck those hogs. Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to Legit Bat. I'm Joe. Jen is here, and Ben may be joining us shortly. Not sure about Lene, but uh, we will get started here. We got uh, Ron from New England. Everybody knows and loves him. Yes, Ron. Hey, so what's up, Ron? A- Ron from New England from the Wicked Planet. <laughs> yes. And, I mean, everybody should know him by now, and if you don't, then you have some catching up to do on both of our shows. I hope everybody had a great Christmas, and it's been a while, and it feels weird to be back in front of the mic again. So, you weird homosexuals. I, I wanted to play that for Ryan because I, I pulled that one from his uh, newest episode with Ghost on their Conspiracy Underground news team, Cunt. And I, I got another one from Ryan. Gay Hitler. I figured I could use those somewhere. Gay Hitler and... Uh, you weird homosexuals. Yeah, I, I'll definitely be able to use those somewhere. Ron, what's going on, buddy? Long time no see. Tell us what's been going on over in uh, New Hampshire at the Wicked Planet. Well, the Wicked Planet has been pretty busy. I mean, I've been doing uh, our regular show every week, plus putting out a bonus show every week uh, for the last few weeks. So that's kind of cool. And Way uh, busier than me. Yeah. So, so uh, I don't know. We might take this following week off. I am not sure. But we've been at it pretty pretty good. I mean, obviously, I'd like you know to do more. But it's just it's a really busy time of year. So. Get it, getting over Christmas, and of course we had that major storm, and <clears throat> we were all out of power, and that kind of put a little damper on Christmas. But I mean, we got power back like late Christmas Eve, like eight o'clock at night, so it was all good. We were able to salvage Christmas, but Merry other Christmas. Than that, other than that, we're just experiencing some really weird weather up here. I mean, we're New Englanders. Jen's a former New Englander, so she knows what I'm talking about. Like weather is really bizarre here, like to begin with, but now it's like normally we'd be sitting on at least two feet of snow, and we were. I mean, there was no snow. There's not even any snow bankings. I, I mean, it's it's down to just grass, and everything looks gross because it's all dead and nothing's. Well, that's green. how it looks you know here. I mean? Yeah. Everything's always dead here. The weather is weird no matter where you live in the country. So I've lived in New England and the Midwest and Northern California, and everyone has their idea of what normal weather is. But when it gets a little weird for a couple of years, everyone's like, oh, it's so weird now. But it happens. It's happened across the country. I've never lived in the South, but I'm sure people in Florida and Texas can attest to the fact that weather gets weird. So I don't know. I think the weather is always fucking weird no matter what. They're just trying to use it to... uh promote climate change now they're like look how weird the weather is climate change it's like well it's been happening for my whole life so yeah yeah well they're definitely pushing that right and who knows they could be manipulating the weather i mean we've talked about that before oh yeah you know i mean it's a complete possibility i wouldn't put any you know after what we've been seeing in the last few years like i wouldn't put anything past them you know i mean to to go ahead and mess with the weather and cause hurricanes and cause these freaking snowstorms like like Buckley's brother, Kellen, was up and he was on the show, uh, what's today, Friday, Wednesday night. And he was saying how it's been cold in Texas. And then our friends in Florida, they text me pictures of their uh, outside thermometers. And it's like just at freezing. You know, yeah, and I don't well, mean and I don't mean northern Florida. I mean, like central Florida, like around Orlando. It's been yeah, really- well, they had, I mean, Texas had that famous deep freeze back in uh, early 2021 that was out of the fucking blue. And I mean, we've talked, you know, a lot about weather manipulation and the whole Project Popeye and that kind of thing. And it's it's basically a known thing now that they can do that. And they have been able to for a long time. But what what seemed I mean, there was something the other day about using a harp to bounce something off an asteroid or something like they're trying to bounce signals off an asteroid with harp. I'm like, what? That's 100 percent a possibility, especially I mean, in in places where it's really warm. I don't know how they're promoting global warming with that when everything's really cold, but whatever to take places that are typically a certain temperature and make it different. That's because global warming up hundred percent to harp is not a thing anymore. It's yeah, climate it's change. Because then anytime it gets hot or cold, they can say, look, 
it's changing. But so global warming awesome. would be great. Cold is bad. People get upset in the cold. Ron, you know this. Mm. Cold makes people angry. It just does. And it kills and that's shit. what they want right now. They're like, all the people who moved to Florida and Texas to be warm, let's make them cold because they're going to get pissed. And they're already pissed up there. I'll tell you what, like, like if I was in Florida, like when we went down for Christmas, not last year, but the year before, uh, they had a cold front come in and it got down to like 45. I was sitting out by the pool in my shorts because we just left like 20 degree weather. And I mean, it was 45. Yeah, it was chilly. Right. But I mean, my buddy's down here goes, oh, my God, how can you sit out there in shorts? And I'm like. Well, because it would be like super below freezing at home right now. Dude, after after <laughs> supper here, I I hang on to my my uh, flip flops and sand, you know uh, swim trunks and all that shit until it gets cold, which is like sixty five, and then I'm like, okay, I'm putting warm clothes on now. It's sixty fucking five. It's cold. Winter's here. Fuck off. I know you would not survive in Massachusetts though, because I was no. like telling Ron before the show. I swear to God, there's nothing like when it hits thirties or 40s after the winter time like a deep freeze when it's negative whatever or just single digits for a long time when it's 30s 40s everyone in massachusetts was rocking shorts and t-shirts hanging yep. out like it's really nice outside and yep. that would be very weird here in california with ice cold dunkin donuts ice coffee right Jesus. but, but you, uh, you yeah can... so, so we broke a record today uh in manchester new hampshire they broke the record by two degrees for how warm it is but, but yeah, I mean, it got to uh high fifties, almost 60 today. Yeah. And it's going to be, it's going to be the same thing tomorrow. So it's, that's going to be unusual to go out on a new year's Eve and not be freezing your ass off. Cause that's typically what would happen. Right. Well, that's, I don't, that's, I'll that's, take it though. I'll take it. Yeah. That's back. Fuck afterwards I'm, from here. Like normally it's like 60 degrees on new year's. No problem. This year we're colder than you are. Explain really? that. Wow interesting it's fucked up anyway if we talk any more about weather i'm going to hear it from everybody in the telegram so uh what what else have you guys been going over on uh, the wicked planet besides snow is there anything oh. else exciting going on uh well no just on the show uh, anonymous sean's been making quite a few appearances he's got this devolution theory that we've been diving into which is pretty super interesting uh he didn't come in this week and uh, because we had kellen coming on from lone star paranormal research Yes. So if anybody wants to go check his stuff out. And it was a really cool show because uh, Buckley and his brother are very, uh, both very opinionated and, and oh, they really? have strong opinions about things. So I'm like, Oh my God, this is going to be like fucking fireworks. So, <laughs> so, so I sat back and I kind of just let them go at it uh, because they just got over having Christmas together. And I guess Buckley and his mom on Christmas Eve got into an argument about something, which I kind of, I kind of bitched him out about. And uh, and then him and Kellen were going back and forth last night. And I did I did put the show out this afternoon. So if anybody wants to go check that out, it's called the uh, the Buckley Brother Battle Royale end of year show. <laughs> nice. But, uh, but you know, I will say one thing though. Uh those two guys, uh well, we were all in on these conversations, but they get into these really uh we don't intend to go deep on a particular subject or a conversation. It ends up getting pretty it ends up getting pretty deep, and we actually hit on a few of those uh, later on in the episode. So, you know, I, I didn't want to. I just wanted to have an easy, an easy show, like an easy night. You know, we don't got to get into anything too crazy. It's the end of the year. We just got over Christmas. Let's just get together and have some fun. So, so that's basically what that was. But I think, I think the listeners will still enjoy it. Uh, well, I hope so. I mean, that's basically all we do here. We never really go too deep. I mean, every once in a while, we'll get super plastered and go deep into something on accident, but it's never, never intentional. Well, uh, what, that's, that's what happened what, last night. We broke into some stuff. So, uh, what's the uh, demolition theory? What, I don't. I'm not familiar with that. Devolution. Oh, devolution. So instead of evolution, it's opposite. It's devolution. Well, that's entropy, right? That should uh, be. Yeah, normal what it's basically about and, and sean is really into this but it's all basically about this long-term plan that you know they not the cabal but they the white hats oh my god have devised to bring down the cabal and bring down all the corrupt politicians 
it's like when you first hear about it, you're like, yeah, it's a little sketchy. But then you start reading about it and then you start looking into it a little bit more. And a lot of the stuff that Sean has been talking is he's been talking to me about devolution now for a few months, but we've only done like three episodes on it. And, uh, and, and he just, he doesn't want to get too far into it on every episode. So he just gives out little snippets here and there. And, uh, and it's starting to come together, but a lot of the stuff that he was telling me like a month ago is actually is happening now, which is kind of interesting. Like what? It's something you different. Tell. Nobody else is talking about it, Joe. You know what I mean? So we try yeah. to we try to talk about subjects that not everybody and their brother are covering, you know, and that that's, that's, I'm big on that. I like to have fresh stuff. So uh, uh, yeah, gonna, I don't even pay attention to what other people are talking about. It just happens. However it happens. So it, what things are coming true now? Okay, so how everything is coming down, like with the FTX thing and the money to Ukraine that is being funneled back through FTX and from from that and then funneled back to the Democrats and the Rhino Republicans. Like Sean was telling me that was going to happen like a month ago. He said that whole that whole thing, that whole crypto thing is is totally a total scam. And this is why they're sending so much money to Ukraine because they know they're getting a big portion of that back in the form, so, in the form of payoffs and, mo and money so, laundering, basically. Yeah, laundering. That's kind of, I mean, everybody was kind of, you know, thinking that's what that was the whole time. And then I don't think anything's going to come of that that little, uh, what do you even want to call Sam Bankman free? A little... Um, Troll? No, there's a name for it. Like... A little beta gay guy. What are those called? Oh, twinks. That's what they're called. Yeah, he's kind of like a little twink. Yeah, but you know, I don't. I, uh, I, I got to agree with you. I don't really think anything is going to happen, and if it does, it's not going to be anytime soon. I mean, I mean, something's going to. Some. I mean, I can't believe they let the guy out on bail because if I wanted to get rid of that guy, it'd be the perfect time to do it because he's not yeah. under any supervision. I mean, I, I even said that on the show. This would be a perfect time to clip this guy. Because the one thing you don't want this guy doing is talking. Well, you know they can clip people even when they're in a prison cell, <clears throat> Epstein. So I, I mean, it doesn't really matter if the they want to want him gone. It'll be easy. It seems like they're going to be using him for something else, though. It, he's too high profile. Well, he's the fall at guy. The moment, at least he's going to be. He's going to be the fall guy. The patsy. He's going to be the patsy. He's going to be the Lee Harvey Oswald. You know, I mean, I mean, that's that's what's going to happen. I mean, you know, I mean, so so the Republicans are going to be taking over the House uh, starting, what, next week? And supposedly they're going to have all these investigations against Hunter, against Joe Biden, against this, against that. I don't right. think it's, gonna, it's not going to go anywhere. This shit, Washington is designed for nothing to happen, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Fucking nothing. It's just going to continue to go on, stealing our money, sending it to whoever. I mean, we just gave Zelensky another forty-seven billion dollars, and I mean, and they just they just signed off on it, like, okay, no, no problem. And then today, Biden signs that one point seven trillion dollar ominous bill, you know, omnibus bill or whatever they want to call it. So, I yeah, like so, ominous better. So, so we're, yeah, well, that's basically what it is because you mean to tell me that in one day you have to read forty-six hundred pages of what's in a budget. I mean, come on. They're passing shit they have no idea. You know, there's pork, there's earmarks, there's all this shit in these budgets. And what do they fucking care? They're leaving. They've already robbed everybody for, for built everybody for what they could possibly have. I mean, look at what Nancy Pelosi's worth. Look at what Chuck Schumer is worth. I mean, you don't you don't get that kind of uh savings based on your government pay. It just doesn't happen, right? But yeah, unless you got some insider trading or uh well, that's legal. Yeah, but that's else. legal, Joe. That's legal. They can do that in Senate and in Congress. Them. Yeah, yeah. So them, them. Yeah. And this whole thing with FTX, you know, you know, Zelensky is in on this. He's all part of. The, he's all part of the plan, right? Everybody knows that Ukraine is number one in the world for money laundering, number number one for human trafficking and sex trafficking, right? And not only that, but the arms trade, the illegal arms trade, goes through Ukraine. I mean, these are common knowledge things that people have known about for years. And this and is why I can't talk to people like, like my parents about it, who are very, very pro stand with Ukraine. And, and we've mentioned on the show is because my sister lives over there. So they immediately jumped on that whole stand, stand with Ukraine. Putin's, you know, fuck him. He's a total. Uh, I'm not saying Putin's a good guy. He's probably a globalist like everyone else. Who knows? I don't know. But 
to see, you know, behind the scenes things like you're talking about laundering and uh, trafficking and all that kind of stuff. You can't say that to people that are backing Ukraine and be like, so it looks like Putin might have a reason for doing this, not to mention the NATO aspect of it and him basically telling the world he was going to do this if NATO kept advancing. They, they don't want to hear that. They're just like, no, poor Ukraine. They're like having Christmas by candlelight and all this shit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there are there are, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in Ukraine suffering. So I don't ever want to downplay that. And uh, but you know, I, I really don't know if Putin is a globalist. To be honest with you, I think, I think he wants to run Russia the way he wants to run it. I mean, it, Russia is run like a mafia family, and he's the, and he's the don, and that's how that works. And he wants total control, and he controls all the natural resources. He controls the gas, the natural gas, oil, all of it. And I think this was his way to bring Russia back to the top of the heap, like including financially, like not just you know respect us on the world stage, but but respect us financially because look at what he's done. Those guys aren't stupid. He had to know that when he went into Ukraine, the rest of the world was going to come down on him with sanctions. He was ready for that. He was anticipating that. But look at what's happened since then. The ruble, after it basically crashed, and he had to know that was going to happen, is now coming up in value, and now it's being backed by gold. So it's a real currency, unlike the U.S. dollar, which is based on petroleum, a fiat currency uh and they overprinted it all during covid anyways just to give it away to people so that's where all this massive inflation is coming from right so i i don't know i i don't know if putin is is uh, a globalist and that's just one of the reasons the other reason is he's never let us uh like a central bank come into russia right so in any country that doesn't let a central bank come in always is going to have a problem on the world stage and this is why they want to suppress these countries. Look at Iran. Iran does not have a central bank. So so they try to suppress them financially with sanctions, not letting them sell their oil. Like Iran would be just as rich as the United States. And the thing that's sad about that is that the Iranian people love Americans. I know that for a fact. It's the government that is the problem. So we punish the government, or I should, shouldn't say we, the U.S. government and its allies, punish countries like Iran, but they punish the government. But who's the ultimate sufferer? The ultimate sufferer is the Iranian people, right? But that's always who it is. And it, it drives me nuts when people back countries or anything based on the actions of their leaders, like uh, like hating all of Russia and disqualifying Russian athletes and cats and shit because of what their government's doing. The Russian people have nothing to do with that. It's the same with the Ukrainian people have nothing to do with what Zelensky's doing in you know, allegedly or factually, who knows? But anytime anybody uh, backs the whole country based on what that government's doing at the time, it drives me nuts. It's all, I put this on Instagram, it's all class warfare. It's the, these big uh, country leaders are just the, the chess pieces that we see and everything else is just their pawns are moving around. Sure, stand with those people, but stand with the people of every country. It's the governments that are the corrupt ones. Everybody should know that. I mean, that doesn't even seem conspiratorial at all Seems yeah you know, the, the thing with russia joe is that i think a majority uh and this is probably pre-ukrainian war like a majority of the russian people are are behind putin uh because if they weren't i have a feeling he'd have been gone a long time ago because they don't fucking play over there but i think what, hard. yeah i think what putin wanted to do is he wanted to increase the value of russia on the world stage and do it very quickly. And that's what he's done. Cause look, look at who he has that wants to buy his oil. Now, China, right? India, India, Turkey, which is a NATO country. Right. And, and he's making deals with, with Iran and Saudi Arabia. And this Isn't is where he basically the, saying, if you want more oil, you got to pay in rubles too. You have to pay in rubles. Yes. And, yeah. th and this is how he repatriates all these rubles that are all over the world. Because once he has the rubles back that are now backed by gold, that's more currency. That's going to increase the value of his country. It's yeah. simple. It's simple economics. But yeah, and nobody would fault like in the U.S. Nobody would fault if we had somebody like Putin, which they actually likened to Trump, which is 
okay, whatever, or their friends, whatever. But if, if the, somebody in America, say Biden did the same shit, but in Afghanistan, you know, far away from home, they would be backing him a hundred percent saying, look, he's stimulating the economy by doing, you know, he's, he's back in the U S dollar by gold that everybody would be uh, praising the very same thing they're blaming Putin for right now. Yeah. So, so that's exactly right. And the other thing is, 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 uh, is everything that Putin is doing, uh, he's a tough guy to read because initially in the beginning of this whole thing, I was asking myself, cause I've studied, I've studied a lot of war. I've studied a lot of that stuff in my life. And I'm like, okay, you, when you're going to go to a war and you're going to invade a country, you have to have, you have to have an objective. What is your objective? Why are you doing this? You don't just do it to fucking test out your equipment. Well, the U S uh, they go to war to spread democracy to uh, third world countries. That's what we, that's do. what they say. Yeah, they yeah. say, we're going to go to war to save the world, but they're really just doing it for financial gain. We're going to bring them some democracy seeds. Yeah. And, and all that is a smoke and mirrors and horseshit. And that's what that is. <laughs> We go to war to further our agenda when that country doesn't want to play along. That's why we went to war with Iraq after 9-11. There wasn't a single Iraqi involved in the 9-11 attack, number one. We wanted to get rid of Saddam Hussein because Saddam Hussein, who was working with the CIA for many years, now all of a sudden decides he's going to trade oil with gold. And he's going to have his own his own uh gold dinar right which is what their dollar is and that would have absolutely like back then now you're going to remember uh, we were first there in 1990 right so you're talking 32 years this shit has been going on in in iraq right we knew it was a good time to go and mess with them they still hadn't recovered from the iran iraq war that's why everybody in these countries is so young and we thought, okay, this is the time for us to clear Saddam Hussein out. We'll make up some cock and bull story about how he's got weapons of mass destruction, which he fucking clearly did not have, because he had no reason to have that. He had the fourth largest army in the world. So, so, and not only that, but he had all these nuclear sanctions on him. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't able to do anything. But Colin Powell goes in front of the whole world and says, well, he has aluminum tubes. He has yellow keg he has all these all these elements that are used to build nuclear weapons we got to go in there uh before he decides he's going to use them on us because he was labeled our arch enemy starting in 1990 well you got to remember we didn't go back into iraq until 2001 or actually 2000 beginning of 2002 right yeah so they had 12 years to fabricate this fucking this whole plan Right. They knew they knew Saddam Hussein didn't have anything. Schwarzkopf kicked their ass in a fucking week. Done. But they told Schwarzkopf, you can't go to Baghdad. Stay out of Baghdad. We got to continue this. We, this isn't how we want this to end. We need to draw this out because we want their fucking oil. And we went to war with Iraq for oil. No other excuse. Not only that, to go in and steal their gold. Because you can bet your ass a lot of that gold that they found in Iraq is now sitting underneath the U.S. Treasury down there in New York. They re yep. they probably called it, we repatriated that goal, but what they did, they fucking stole from the Iraqi people. Right? Yeah, and that's all we've been doing for decades, and that's Saddam why it was us. was stealing from his people. He was selling all that oil, and he was keeping all the money, and he wasn't spending any on the people. See, that was the difference between him and Gaddafi. Now, we took Gaddafi out for a similar reason. He was going to go on the gold dinar and he was going to say, fuck you, United States, and fuck your petrodollar. I don't need it. I got plenty of oil and I got plenty of gold. So what are you going to do? Well, they fucking showed him what they were going to do. He ended up having a sword stuck up his ass, right? Yeah. That's what you do when you don't let a central bank in your country. That's what you do when you tell tell the United States to go fuck themselves and you're threatening to crash our economy. This is the only reason we go to war. So it's so you guys are 100% correct. This has nothing to do with spreading democracy. And then fucking people wouldn't know democracy if they had it handed to them. They had it handed to them. They do not understand the concept of democracy. They live in a tribal, it's a tribal land. They run by tribes, warlords, shit like yeah, that. You, that. That's how they, that works. 
you tell the U.S. to fuck themselves is like telling the mafia boss in the same town as you to fuck themselves. You think they're just going to not do anything? Yeah, they, they might not do anything for a week or two. But when yeah. they do, you're going to know about it. But getting back to Putin, like, what was his objective? Like, his objective in the beginning was, I'm going to go into eastern Ukraine and I'm going to liberate the, the the Russian people that live there. Because in those, in those regions, those people were pro-Russian, Russian speaking, because, you know, Russian and Ukrainian is not the same language. It's similar. I guess, how could we describe it? It could be the difference between uh, Spanish and Italian or Spanish and Portuguese, right? Well, as of as of the war starting, we learned that um, it's not never not called Kiev now. It's called Kiev and it's spelled differently. So there's there's the difference. And in Ukraine, your sister, Joe's sister, was talking about how they know Russian and Ukrainian, but. They speak Russian more often because everyone in Ukraine spoke Russian because and now and Russia. now they don't. So they're yeah. like, uh, but they can't speak English either because they're like, Ugh. so they're trying to they can understand Ukrainian, but they can't speak it as well. As the Ukrainians are brushing up on their own language because to okay. fuck Russia. Yeah. OK, so to get back to what you said, I wondered why they did that with Kiev. It's always been Kiev as long as I can remember, but they started calling it Kiev. And here's why. Kiev is the Russian pronunciation. Right. Yeah. Kiev, Kiev is the Ukrainian pronunciation. Yeah. And just as of uh, February of this year, from what I could tell, because I've never heard that before. I've never heard uh, it from my no, sister I mean, or anybody up, else. We're coming up, what, in another month or so is going to be a year. They've been fucking around for a year. Like, yeah. should, like Russia, Russia should have been able to go in and take Ukraine in like uh, two weeks, maybe a month, max. I mean, they never attacked Kiev. Like, at all, right? But getting back to where I was saying, he wanted to liberate those people that were under attack. So the Ukrainian government was attacking some of their own people and the Russian-speaking and Russian, uh, Russian-leaning people that lived in eastern Ukraine. So, so this, so this was Putin's uh, excuse to go in there. He was going to liberate them, right? He was going to go in. He was going to take that territory. He was going to annex it into Russia, and all these Russian-speaking people and all these Russians that lived there would now just be Russians. And now, now Putin can say, okay, I'm going to protect you because now this is Russian territory. You fuck around with me now, there's going to be a problem. But what happened? We started seeing odd Russian attacks all over Ukraine, right? And I know we talked about this before because I remember when we talked, I would I would check with you to make sure that your sister got out of Ukraine. Okay, like way back in the beginning, like back in March, right? Yeah, yeah. So... So he's got all these different places he's attacking. He's not attacking like Kiev, like he's got not going near the capital, which would be the number one objective, right? Take out the capital. Uh, and and this is when we started hearing the rumors of how the United States had illegal bioweapons labs in Ukraine, right? Which we know now to be uh 100% absolute fact. We did. And he was going in there and he was taking out these these labs because he was a little concerned that whatever happened in Wuhan, like, like we're still trying to figure that out could possibly happen there. Like in Ukraine, they could be working on biological weapons to use on the Russians, right? Because yeah. Ukrainians and the Russians, I mean, you know, that, that, that don't hash out and dude, that goes all the way back to the Kazarian empire, which is a subject I'd like to, you know, maybe get with you guys and talk about on a later show. But yeah. that beef between Ukraine and Russia goes back like hundreds and hundreds of years, right? But I remember when that was happening, everybody was denying that there was any labs there. Even the U.S. government was denying, that, oh, no, there's no labs there. You're fucking crazy. That's a conspiracy theory. A couple of weeks later, somebody from the U.S. government admits that, yeah, we got bioweapons labs there. Isn't there like a shitload there, too? Not just like a couple. There's like a shitload of them. 20 i think something like that i mean a lot kind of a lot for bioweapons lab a lot. and what was interesting joe was that you could see where he was doing these attacks and you could lay the map of where these bioweapons labs were and they were like as you know identical like on these attacks so that's what putin was doing but i i don't understand why he just didn't go in there and just just take out kiev take out take out Zelensky. as Zelensky is a puppet for the united states we put him in power the guy had no fucking like any experience to be the president of anything other than being a president on a, on a TV show. Right. Yeah. 
But but I mean, well, Ronald Reagan was an actor too, and I thought he was a pretty good president, first president I ever voted for, and nobody messed with that guy. But Zelensky's a different guy. He was over there guarding United States and cabal interests. In my opinion, that's what Zelensky does. But what's interesting that Zelensky has done recently, like he's shutting down media. He's doing he's doing everything, everything that the fascists would do. And we'll come back to that. But he's shutting down the media. Allegedly, he's shutting down Orthodox churches, right? And, he, and he's shutting down any opposition parties to him. Like, nobody can run against him now. Well, that sounds an awful like what, what uh, Adolf Hitler did. It sounds like if Trump did that, that he would be called a dictator and probably impeached. Well, it is a dictator is what he's... what it, what President Zelensky is becoming a dictator, if not already. He's just a president in name, in, in my opinion. Right, right. That's right. what I mean, though. Zelensky can do it. And they're like, yay, he's so brave. But what I find the same shit like, happened here. Oh yeah, yeah. No, everybody's pumping him up. So, so what I find interesting is this fucking guy can come and go from Ukraine anytime he wants. In the middle of a war, right? yeah, yeah. In the middle of a war, he can fly to the United States, show up in Congress, unravel a Ukrainian flag in our chambers, which is horseshit. Yeah. Should not have been allowed. Fucking making out with Pelosi, which would fucking gag me. Oh. But but what I'm saying is the fucking guy shows up at the White House dressed in fatigues. Yeah. Dude, you're trying to come and get another $47 billion. Put a fucking suit on. Is that a little green I'm sweater on? Saying, I know there's a lot of people that would like to argue that with me. I'm just saying, put a fucking suit on. You want to come and you want to take another $47 billion of our dollars. Now how is he going to launder it back? Because FTX is defunct, right? How's that, how's that money going to get back to the Democrats? Yeah, they're going to uh, have we'll, to they'll find a way. But what yeah, I'm saying, find this guy is going all over the world and all these different countries and like, like fucking Oliver Twist, like begging for money. And it's like, dude, you got enough fucking money. If you can't make it happen with that much money, dude, you're on your own. You deserve to fucking lose. What happened? He's taking to, a salary. Uh, he's he's playing his part and taking his cut of the you know the salary and give whatever happens to the rest doesn't matter. He's got a couple in his pocket. He's probably okay, fine. Why on earth would somebody that's the president of a nation that's under attack by one of the biggest military powers in the world gamble money that he got for aid from other countries? I'm not just talking about United States. Why would he gamble that? In the fucking crypto market, unless he was doing something shady, like he unless it was doing. controlled, and he knew what was going to happen. Yeah, That's I, I so just Ukraine, don't know. Though. That's so par for the course. <laughs> He's just playing yeah. a role. He's doing all of these things, and then meanwhile, the U.S. government or the media, it's all propaganda, and they're like, "Stand with Ukraine." So people are sad for them, like we've talked about on this whole show today so far. Yeah, and people aren't paying attention to that shit. They just hey, think, so oh, check, sorry, so Ukrainians, we need it. So check this out. So right in the beginning of that, I was, I was like, I have to observe shit for a good couple of weeks before I can wrap my head around it. So I'm watching the news 24 seven to see what's going on. After the second or third week, I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck is the holdup, Vladimir? Get that fucking shit, bomb, bomb Kiev, take out the fucking president. Let's call it. Get in, get the fuck out. Get in there, get what you want, and get out. That's how you're supposed to do it, right? And I'm watching, I'm watching. And then I noticed my wife had the Ukraine flag on her Facebook thing. And I'm Jeez. like, uh, I'm like, I'm like, okay, so listen, let me tell you a little story. And my wife has learned to actually listen to me now because she never would. I was always a conspiracy theorist, but when she, now, now after, I mean, we, I know we're going on 16, 17 years, we've been together. She's like, oh, yeah, if Ronnie says something, I probably should listen, right? So I said, okay, so here's the deal. Okay. This is a fucking scam. This war is a scam. I'm not saying it's a 100% wag the dog, but it's a fucking least 50% wag the dog because we're seeing all these weird like production companies coming out of there with all this film. Uh, and then there was this dude that was on the union of the unwanted chat on telegram and he was getting like in Ukraine and he was checking shit out. He goes, he was sending pictures back of people taking the bus, taking the train, fucking there's nothing Sorry. going on here, you know? So, so I showed that to my wife and I give her a few examples. That fucking Ukraine flag came right off her Facebook, which I thought was kind of funny. That's yeah. That's but the weird thing is my sister no, came home for so, Christmas. People but, are so fucking susceptible to propaganda and bullshit 
that they will follow the herd, just like we know the term in our business, sheeple, follow the herd. I, I want a virtue signal. I want to make it look like I care about these people. And the whole time, it's just being fucking played, right? Now, most of the people that put those, you know, I'm not talking about your wife specifically, but I could be. But most of the people that just knee jerk put, you know, something like that up. Mm. I got my COVID vaccine or I stand with Ukraine or whatever the fucking current thing is. They don't even know what the fuck that is or what's happening. They just put it up there because they see it and Facebook recommends it to them. And they're like, try out this new frame. I stand with Ukraine. He, oh, sure. I stand with Ukraine. Anyway, where's my Starbucks? You know, that's how yeah. that's how little they're even thinking about that kind of stuff. And yeah. I mean, to their credit, fine. Ignorance is bliss. But like, at least stop just doing it's, whatever. Is making us not us, but it's making our country fall in line with China and North Korea and countries like that, where they just blindly follow their leaders out of fear of looking bad or it's having the their peers tattle on them. I, that's going to happen here. I don't know why our, our country is trying to make us weak, but I thought the United States was supposed to be the strongest country in the world. Mm. And now we're turning into this weak ass little bitch country. Well, well, I think, I think that's what they wanted to appear like. I mean, because you have, I mean, I mean, look at the people that that think like how we think, like like they want to silence us as much as possible, right? So, they don't want our patriotism or our truth telling or anything to spread like a fucking virus, because then then it's then it's going to like totally destroy their narrative, which is happening. It's finally happening. People are catching on to this shit. They're seeing what's going on in the southern border. They wouldn't give Trump four billion dollars to build a wall, which where he built the wall worked. They didn't have four. Oh, no, no. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. Oh, no, we don't. But when Obama was president, oh, no, we got to do something about border security. Now that Trump is president. Oh, no, we're not doing anything. You're not getting no money for that. Right. So we have literally hundreds of thousands of migrants coming into the country. And some of them might be legit and they're escaping whatever and they want to come here. I get that. But a lot of it's drug trafficking. It's cartels. It's human trafficking. It's it's all this stuff that cartels are having a fucking heyday. Yes. They're probably making more money in the last since Biden has become president than they had in the whole last 10 or 20 years. Like no that, that's the problem with the uh, anti not anti-immigration, but the people that say you're racist if you're anti-illegal immigration. It's like, no, they vet them for sure. I know they're trying to escape from a shitty country. That's fine. If I were to go over to for some reason, want to escape to Spain or something? You don't think they're going to vet me first and be like, "Wait a minute, are you a criminal? Like, oh, yeah, no, you have something whole, in your bag, you know?" But that's the whole, that's the open the whole, border thing is just crazy. They're just letting the whole, whoever wants in. That's the whole shift in people's thought process, right? They don't think like that. They think that every person coming across that border is a downtrodden person that needs our help, and we're here to give it to them. Okay, so so I I get. I get kind of like the base of what they're thinking, but people will not take any time to look into anything. They won't, they won't, they won't read a fucking article if it's more than 10 minutes long. Cause it's, it's their attention span is not there. Right. You just read the headline. Yeah. Good night. Night. And the headline is designed to give you the story without you reading it. That's what headlines. That's what, are. That's what planet retard is literally based on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to come on that again sometime. Yeah. But, but All anyway, right, let's schedule it in. You know, in in this case, I am not one hundred percent absolutely sure that Putin is the bad guy here. I really don't. Oh, I'm not at all. Yeah, yeah. So I don't so, think anyone but, can be sure of anything. We have like half the story from Putin, and we don't have Putin's side of the story. It's all one sided we'll Western American propaganda. Media. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's all we have. We can't assume anything. And but, but if you were to say that though, like I just did, people would be like, "Oh, you some pro Russia fucking fascist." Blah, blah. It's like, what? No, the fuck? no. I want to hear his side of the story in the actual side of the story, not just what the Western media says. This is Putin's story. He's an asshole. That's it. You know, or that Biden all. is amazing and Trump is the bad guy. Whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Not yeah, everything. Exactly. Yeah, and if they don't want to be accusing uh, Putin of being a fascist, like at all, because. Uh, those two ideologies kind of clash and they have always been at each other. There's always been a form of uh, hatred between communists and fascists. Not that I would consider Russia a communist country. I mean, it might be a communist country, like that's how they want it to look, but it's not, it's a capitalist country. Right. But 
Ukraine has a lot of fascists in it. They have a lot of Nazis there. And that's just not making shit up because you have a lot of these people that are fighting for the Ukraine in this Azov battalion make no bones about being Nazis, like, at all. We don't have any problem funding them, right? But look at the history. This is why they're Nazis. These are the grandkids and the great-grandkids of the actual Nazis that were there when Germany occupied Ukraine. And they well, fucking they're still there. using the same symbolism, even swastikas. You're using the black sun, the swastikas, the the Z, or whatever the fuck that other thing was. But the funny part is, let's mirror this again. Zelensky is shown in multiple pictures with the Azov Battalion and all their Nazi symbolism. And we we're like, look, look, look at this. Again, to mirror it, if Trump was found in the same situation or any, you know, whoever the progressive left doesn't like, if they were found in the same situation with those same symbols, can you imagine how that would be blasted on the mainstream media? They were like, Trump was seen with Nazis, blah, blah, blah. But they don't they don't show that with Zelensky. It's all on back channels and, you know, our conspiracy theory channels and everything. And we're like, no, look at this. He's actually with Nazis. Because Russia is against them right now. And we have spent a very long time, almost a, a century, I guess, uh, saying that Russia is the bad guy forever. I mean, it goes back and forth, but Russia has been bad like for quite some time. Well, since right after uh, World War II. Yeah, because yeah, during yeah. World War II, Russia okay, was so in out. 20 years, it'll be Close to But you know what I mean. Close to a long age. It's been a long time that people have been a little skeptical of Russia. So if Russia goes against a country, of course, the American people are going to back the other country and not Russia. Which is funny since Hillary sold yellow cake uranium or whatever to Russia a few years back. But nobody talks about that one. Don't talk about that. No, she's off, she's off limits. Like, nobody will talk about the shit that she pulled. Yeah, that was called Uranium One, where she sold off. Do you know that the United States doesn't even have the capability to even make uranium right now? Because we sold I it off. It. I believe it, yeah. And, and, they're, and they're all, you know, trying to shut down these nuclear power plants. That's like they were doing in Europe, like Germany. They took four of them offline. Now they're fucking firing them back up. Because they know that they're going to freeze their ass off. I mean, we're already into January here, right? A couple of days. Yeah. Germany's weather is just like ours in New England. It's very similar, right? That's why Audis are so popular here. But anyways, uh, the weather the weather in New England is very similar to Bavaria, right, which is southern Germany. But anyways, they're bringing all this shit back up online, right? They're starting coal-fired plants, which I have zero problem with because I was born in Kentucky. I'm all about the coal, you know? No, CO2, we, CO2 feeds we, the plants. Yeah, we burn we feed we burn, the plants. Yeah, we burn coal here in New Hampshire sometimes, so I'm all good with coal. I don't have a problem with that. But, but yeah. So I mean, again, I think I think we're coming up on a year in this Ukraine war. Hundred and ten billion dollars, and that's just the money we know about, right? Do the math on that. Divide three hundred sixty-five days by one hundred and ten billion dollars. That's some serious fucking Too much money. math. Too yeah. much math. Yeah, you well, calculator makes it easy, but. <laughs> But anyways, I just given the people like a reference they can look into. So I don't know, you know, where this is going to end. Now I'm hearing that there are back channels uh, where they want to have talks. Uh, because right now, I think I think Putin's main thing is Putin knows he's kind of in a catch-22 right now. That if he escalates this war, he's going to have a serious problem. Because now we're sending Patriot missiles over there. And everybody's like, Oh my God, we're giving them Patriot missiles. Listen, Patriot missile shit, that's old technology. Like yeah. anything that we're sending to Ukraine now, not everything, but a lot of stuff like missile systems that we're sending there. Javelins, the javelin yeah. systems. Yeah, yeah, this is old. all this is all technology from the 80s and 90s, if not older. Right. I remember when they first now now my ex-brother-in-law worked on the Patriot missile. And that was late 80s when they were developing that. And the first time they used a Patriot missile was in the first Iraq war. So, I mean, this is old technology. It still works really good, right? So, but but I mean, you know, it's not like we're giving them like really high dollar. I mean, it is high dollar stuff, but I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. Relatively. We're not giving them like shit that we have that we don't even know we have, right? But. Something needs to happen. This war needs to wind down. Something needs to come clean. Somebody needs to go down for fucking all this money laundering stuff. And well, I, think, a... I, think, I think Zelensky's days are numbered. I really do. 
I don't I don't think he's going to survive this war either, like physically or being a president in Ukraine. I, I really yeah, I don't, don't. I don't see how it could. But that's a perfect uh, kind of a pivot point to go into some. Uh, what What do you think is going to happen the, in this new year, this 2023? Like it doesn't have to do have to be with Ukraine and Russia, but like in general, where do you see some of this stuff going? Well, I, I don't know. You know, I, I just been trying to avoid as much fucking news as possible number one i have successfully done that yeah so have that lately mostly because i've been at work but yeah yeah I, I know you've been busy right but uh <laughs> but anyways you know i i don't know i mean something something extraordinary is going to have to happen to uh keep us from and, and everybody's saying we're not in a recession we're not in a recession okay well they changed the definition of what a recession is to fit the Democrat narrative, right? We've been in a recession. You know, when you have, what is it, two consecutive quarters of negative growth, that's a recession. Like, we're there, right? We we've have been massive, there. Yeah, we've been there. So we have massive inflation from the money printing with nothing to back it up, right? So we have that. So it's almost like some part of the system is going to have to take a major crash and not to use Klaus Schwab's term to great reset, but in a sense, I think the United States financial system needs some form of reset because everything has been overinflated. Stock prices are overinflated. They've been saying that for years. The housing market overinflated. Something needs to bring that back down to reality or, or we're going to have a catastrophic black swan event in the financial world where it goes to zero in the United States. And that could happen. The pieces it, of that. Don't you think that's bottom, kind of the, the, the prequel or the, you know, the foundation to the great reset is that very idea. And I think everybody feels that they're like the financial system cannot, this isn't uh, sustainable. No, this can't continue that much longer. They're printing trillions of dollars every couple of months. They're, yeah. Even a non-economist can kind of like wrap their head around that, like me. Um, but every, everybody kind of agrees that this isn't sustainable and that there has to be a great reset. And that kind of makes me think that's why the WF and Klaus Schwab comes in and are like, we need a great reset, a financial reset, blah, blah, blah. And here's our solution to it. And it's probably going to be fucked up, some digital ID shit. You can go as far as you want with it. But I don't think whatever the main mainstream you know controllers have in mind is going to be anything for our benefit it might benefit them a lot it might look really good on paper but how do you think that goes okay so the wef world economic forum or as everybody knows at davos yeah their idea of the great reset is based on their thought process and their think tanks and everything that they put together to bring the world into a uh like a one world government right where Every country has the same currency, you know, whatever. Like you said, social credit score, everything's going to be digital. There's not going to be any cash. You're going to be able to track everything that you do. It's going to be like from George Orwell's 1984 total surveillance system. This is what the WEF, I think, is what their ultimate goal is. Now, Klaus Schwab wrote another book called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. Okay, so I'm in the process of listening to that. But some of the ideas of that kind of, like, I don't want to say I agree with this fucking guy, but but a lot of the stuff he does talk about makes sense. Like, like industry in, in the world now, right, is becoming antiquated as far as what we need, what we what we have to have, and what we probably really should have, right? But... Everything is so screwed up because we shipped all that shit overseas to China, right? So we're not making anything in the United States anymore. They're not making anything in a lot of European countries like they used to, right? Germany used to be a huge economy for manufacturing. Like, it's not anymore. Japan, same thing, right? But there's a lot of good ideas in his fourth industrial revolution setup that he's, that he's talking about, okay? But you know that the end goal to that is to have total control. Now, when I say the United States financial system needs to have some form of reset, they could simply do that by taking some of that cash off the market and fucking destroying it. And the other thing that, because that's what it is, is too much money in the system. That's what causes inflation. 
right? That's what happened to Germany after World War One. It was the same thing. You know, you've seen the pictures, the kid with the wheelbarrow full of money to get the fucking, like, a loaf of bread, right? Or using it to wipe their ass. Yeah, it'd yeah be whatever. Whatever. Start, it, yeah. start, start the wood stove, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, but I mean, I mean, something needs to be done here. And our currency needs to be backed by something other than oil. Because Joe Biden comes in on day one and destroys domestic oil and gas. Okay, buddy, your fucking dollar is based on that. Right. Yeah. You know, at Bretton Woods conference and, and all these other conferences that they had after World War II, they decided that the United States dollar was going to be the global dollar. And it was going to be backed by oil, not gold. I mean, at that time, it still was backed by gold and silver. I mean, we actually had dollar bills that said silver certificate on them. I don't know if you've ever seen those. I have. I have one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what I'm talking about? Like, like that dollar, that dollar, whatever the denomination is, to this day is worth however many dollars of silver, right? That's what silver certificate means. It's money that's backed by actual precious metal. Yeah. Our currency has changed and evolved over the years. So it's no longer like a Federal Reserve note. I mean, that's, you know, whatever. And, and, and we don't even want to get into the Federal Reserve. Which is not which is not federal, and they have no reserves, right? I mean, it's not even part of the U.S. government. They called it the Federal Reserve to make people think good about it, just like they did the Patriot Act. Oh, that's patriotic. I'll go along with that. It's just another well, corporation that has ties to the government, which is fascism, and which is another conversation as well. Well, kind of, but yeah. Well, this, okay. So, the, so the the Federal Reserve Bank is is run by the Kabbalists. It's run by the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the all these really these Illuminati families. That is not a conspiracy. Old names. That's proven. So, and this all goes back to again my Kazarian Empire, which I did a bunch of talks. I went on talked with Sam on uh, Tinfoil Hat about it, and they knew that if they could have their own entity, their own bank, which is the Federal Reserve. Just central bank, and they have them all over the all over the world. Like when the Rothschilds had their like four or five kids, they sent them out all over the world to start central banks, because they knew with the use of central banks they could loan money to countries with interest attached. So therefore, the country is never ever going to be able to pay it back. This is why we will never have a balanced budget in the United States. You know, a lot of politicians they run on the whole thing. Oh, we're going to balance the budget. No, you're not. It's fucking literally impossible. They weren't going to balance the budget when we were three trillion in debt. Now it's, uh, what is it, thirty something? I don't even know what it is now. I lost no, it's not possible. 30. It's not possible. Yeah. It's never going to balance happen. that shit. Maybe print some more. And this is one of the reasons why they clipped Kennedy because Kennedy Kennedy wanted to get rid of the uh, Federal Reserve and he wanted to have United States Treasury notes, backed by gold, backed by silver. Okay, so. The whole economics of that system, that's a whole other fucking three hour show. Oh yeah. But but the but this is some of the things that Putin has uh resisted. And this is another reason why maybe the, maybe they lured Putin into this. Maybe somehow they tricked Putin into going to war with Ukraine. I mean, we don't know. We know that these intelligence agencies can are capable of doing some pretty some pretty crazy stuff. Like we know that, right? I don't think they really tricked him as much as lured him. I mean like I said before, he he kept saying, I'm going to do this if NATO keeps advancing. And they kept doing that. So he's like, well, fuck you. I told you I'm going to do this. Okay, and so like you ever said, seen United dumb. States, have you ever seen the United States keep a fucking promise? Ever? Uh, just to raise taxes. That's the only one I've seen. Okay. NATO is run by the United States. All these other countries, they pay us to be in NATO. And when that fucking wall came down, that was part of the agreement that Ukraine would never become part of fucking NATO. And, they, and they're, and they like, not a member of NATO, but they're a de facto member of NATO because fucking NATO was sending them all kinds of money and guns, right? Billions. All kinds of aids. This is the thing that was pissing Putin off. Just when Zelensky uh, submitted a request to become a, a member of NATO, that pissed Putin off. Because that's not on, that's not on the cards. Listen, here's something else. Check out. You want to talk about symbolism, right? When you see Zelensky, you see that little emblem he has on his chest, the Ukrainian emblem. 
It's like a trident. Is that and on it, his, his sweatshirt thingy that, that he wears? On his his sweatshirt. Okay. That is the original symbol for the Kevzarian Empire. Oh, shit. It is the same symbol brought up through the years, which also was the symbol of Baal and Moloch. I believe it. I have no like, evidence, but I believe it. Pictures. Yeah, no, no, that that's proven. That's gone back. So I don't know. A lot of people need to look into that. A lot of people need to uh stop being so so uh so quick to jump on the bandwagon to support people that maybe you shouldn't be supporting. I'm not telling people what to do, I'm just saying be smart about it. Well, I just I uh, I mean we can get off the Ukraine thing, but the first thing that t- tipped me off with all this is that certain people like Hillary Clinton, George Soros, and all those types were some of the first to be like, we stand with Ukraine and trying to get people to stand with Ukraine. And that's why I tried to explain that to my parents too. I'm like, are you seriously just following? You hate Hillary Clinton and George Soros. Why, what are you doing? They're, and I'm not saying they're always wrong, but they are kind of, but if they're, if they're telling you to do something, at least look into it a little bit. But since you have a child over in that country, it's that all that's out the window and it's just that's what they're banking on. They're hoping that someone oh, yeah. has a left one there or that someone will relate somehow and side with them. That happens. And it was time. fresh out of COVID, too. So it was like, here's a new yeah. thing. Same with COVID. That was the same thing. They just tried to get people onto their side of the fence by grasping at straws. OK, well, can people relate to this if they don't agree with me as a person or my values let's try to tug at their heartstrings what about grandma yeah exactly of course yeah okay so we're talking about george soros the jew that turned jews into the nazis yeah so yeah that guy i can't believe he's not dead yet yeah well he's probably fucking been dead for all we know (laughs) true he's dead like that fucker should have been dead like 20 years ago but, like uh, but yeah, other than, that, other than that, you know, I would like I, I would like to see things kind of turn around. I mean, the price of gasoline in New England is uh, is coming down. It's traditionally high in the winter anyways, because up here they have this winter blend. Which is supposed <laughs> to, which is supposed to, you know, not freeze up in your car or give you half water, which is something that typically happens. But, but gasoline is coming down. But funny enough, diesel is staying high. Because everything runs on diesel. So it's another scam. The only reason the price of gas came down was because Joe Biden flooded the market with our strategic reserve fuel. That's what that's all yeah. about. But what do you think? I, I've heard a lot of people saying that gas uh, is going to go back, not heating gas, but gasoline for cars is going to go back up very soon. And that's going to suck because typically it goes up, at least over here during the summer, because people are traveling. Yeah. It's been historically lower during the winter because nobody's fucking going anywhere. As soon as people start traveling, they're like, oh, let's jump the price again. That's happened every summer since I've been a kid. So if it starts going up during the winter, that's a bad fucking sign for 2023 because this was a bad enough of a year. It, you know, where we were, I think that's going up. It was seven dollars a gallon. It got down to three twenty six was the lowest yeah, that it's, it's been. And up. now it's up to three seventy. So. Oh, so you're yeah. under four bucks. You're under four bucks. Yeah, um, we're, we're about like the ghetto gas stations, ghetto gas stations where you might get jumped and people will ask you if you have meth. Yes, it's under four yeah. dollars. You just got to swat them away. We're about uh, three thirty here. Uh, anywhere is between three fifteen and three thirty, depending on who it is. Right. Uh, but diesel is still five and change a gallon. So, you know, heating oil is still hovering around five bucks a gallon, which is what a majority of people in New England heat their houses with is oil. It's not propane or- okay so what what the fuck is heating oil i thought that was propane when you i thought no, i thought that was a new hampshire way of saying propane heating, <laughs> heating oil is diesel fuel so, so he, heating fuel is a type of diesel fuel that's not refined quite as much as low sulfur diesel that goes in your diesel trucks in your cars uh, okay so, so it's just yeah. okay yeah. And, so and it's then basically have, propane and then we have a product called off-road diesel which is the same as diesel fuel for cars and trucks, but it's died because it's tax free. So, and that's a huge fine. But I, but I tell you what, I, I was down to the gas station the other day and I saw some dude pull up with his big super duty and he went right to the off road tank and fucking filled his truck right up. That's a $10,000 fine in New Hampshire. Oh, shit. And they find the gas station, not the person buying it. Uh- <laughs> 
So, like so anyways, uh, so so I mean, for heating oil, you uh, we call it uh, K two, and then K one is kerosene. Kerosene is very highly uh, refined. It's actually it's crystal clear. It looks just like Isn't water. That jet fuel, basically. Jet fuel is diesel fuel based. Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but kerosene right now seven dollars a gallon, seven and change a gallon. So and if you have an outside oil tank, technically that's what you're supposed to put in it is kerosene because kerosene won't freeze, where heating oil will gel up. But people are getting smart. They they buy the heating oil for you know three dollars less a gallon, and then they put diesel nine one one in it, which is a product that keeps it from gelling up. So I mean it's fucking whatever. Is that but, illegal as well? Uh, no, it's perfectly legal. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, like at the shop, at the shop, uh, we burn off-road diesel uh, for our oil furnace here, which doesn't run that often because we got a huge wood furnace. But, uh, but yeah. So for other other uh, other things, I, I, I coming up this year, I I gotta say, there's probably gonna be a market in the housing, uh, like a market correction in the housing industry. It's I mean, happening right now. Yeah, I work in that industry. It is happening. So yeah. housing prices have come down and rates have come down. Rates haven't come down as much as we'd like to see, but housing prices have d- come down quite a bit, at least here in California, where it's one of the worst places in the country to buy a house. So well, Jen, we're, Jen, we're wanted, seeing business pick up. I want to ask you about that. Like, like not so much because you guys are kind of in a red section of California, right? A little bit. Yeah. We, I mean, yeah, we are, but it's still California. So, yeah. Right. Okay. So this mass exodus of California, is it everything that's being reported? Are that many people leaving California? And if so, has that had any bearing on the housing market? Like say, you know, these houses are no longer in demand because I have a feeling that for every person that moves out of California, there's probably three people waiting to move into California. Yeah. I mean, has this effect, has this affected the housing market where, where most people have left? I don't know if that's the reason. I mean, it, the housing market was challenging at the probably the last six months of 2022 has been the roughest <clears throat> that I've seen. And I've only been in the field for like two and a half years. So I don't have a ton of experience technically. So about June, we saw quite the struggle because interest rates were up around like seven and a half percent for people with great credit. These aren't like FHA loans. These are like regular conventional loans, 20% down, great credit. Seven, 7% seven was a great rate for them. Um, so That's and house, when people were housing borrowing. prices, but people are buying, you know, 1500 square foot homes for, you know, in a nice area for like $500,000 in some cases. So it's, it was pretty that crazy. Sound, that doesn't sound bad. That's what they are here. I mean, my house is like 450 and it's 1800 square feet. But anyway, just as an example. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it, I guess it just depends, but there's a, I mean, we bought our house, our house is 1100 square feet, but we got it for 250. It was 248 in 2020. And that was pretty normal. I mean, housing prices weren't that low. They were still rising. Housing prices will always rise. This is my biggest qualm with people who say housing prices need to come down. They need to come down. No, they fucking don't. Because would you want to buy a house if you knew that the price was going to come down and you'd be upside down in your loan after you bought it? Exactly. Exactly. No, that's not what you want to happen. You want rates to come down. You want prices to come down. You want the market to correct. And then you want prices to steadily increase logically not spike and then drop and spike and drop it has to steadily increase though or else buying a house is not an investment it doesn't make any sense yeah so you know the thing, do it. the thing is new hampshire is very unique in new england uh because of our tax-free status you know our tax-free and our no income tax and stuff like oh, that. oh yeah it, i used to just, live there i loved it i bought my car in new hampshire for that exact reason yeah yeah it's just just the way of life in new hampshire is kind of cool i mean i mean there's a lot of blue areas like the cities, but you know, you get out in the rural areas, that's all totally red here, right? And, yeah. and it's a nice and it's a nice place to live, but it's getting very expensive to live. Therefore, people are cashing out of their homes that they can make a ton of money on. I mean, the average house in 1990, when I built my house and it was all said and done, I want to say it was evaluated for about 150 or 160,000, okay? Back in 1990. Now it's four and change. 
right? Okay. Do you have uh, acreage? Do you uh, have land? So, uh, less than two acres, but we own the land next to us, which is another. Oh, three. okay. Yeah, so, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So my house is what they call a non-conforming lot. It's not because you have to have in my town, you have to have two acres to build a house on. And you have to have 250 feet of road frontage, right? So, but anyways, because uh, my land was grandfathered in because the town actually took one piece of land, split it into two before my parents bought it. So one piece of land is now two pieces of land. So we own one and then we bought the, we acquired the one next to us. So, which my family owned anyway, I just acquired it from another family member. But, uh, but anyways, to get back to that. So a what a lot of people are doing, they're like, Okay, well, I bought this house in 1980. I paid 100 grand for it. Now I can get 300 or 400 for it. They're selling out and they're getting the fuck out because the property tax is so crazy. But here's the thing. So what happens? People from Mass, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, right? Not people from Maine or Vermont because they're in the same boat. They they kind of do their own thing. Like they don't want growth, but everybody wants to come to New Hampshire. And that's why if there's ever like a housing crash or anything like that, for whatever reason, it does not affect New Hampshire. It just doesn't. Because there's always a long list of people that want to move to New Hampshire. And now that you've got people that are older, they're retirement, they won't, they don't want to do snowbird anymore. They just want to go to Florida or Arizona or Texas and live there full time for the rest of their lives. Like they're selling out. And they're letting other people with money come in because they got to have money to come into New Hampshire, right? So that's why New Hampshire is not really affected when it comes to that. But uh, but New Hampshire uh, is a very corrupt state, too. So I think that has a lot to do with it. That's why uh, that's yeah. why there's so much money here. I think they're all I mean, same with California. They're all fucked up. Point. Yeah, <laughs> just depends. On I don't your think anybody's above the or below the law. Is it above the law? OK, so there's a reason why Jelaine work. Maxwell was hiding in New Hampshire. And we'll leave it at that. All I right. thought she was living in Massachusetts. No. No, she got she was camped out in Bradford, New Hampshire. I thought That's it was what, something Manchester by the sea. No, no. Oh, all right. Trust me on that. All right, okay. They got well, her multi million dollar house out in a fucking middle of nowhere up in Bradford, New Hampshire, which is a very sleepy town and it's sleepy for a reason. I knew a bank, a bank robber that lived there. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but yeah, there's a lot of shady stuff goes in New Hampshire. I mean, uh, you know, not only do movie stars and musicians all own land up in New Hampshire on the lake, a lot of criminals own land up there, too. So, so celebrities. Hey, the mountains is a great place to hide. There's a lot of weird celebrities that have mountain homes that you can only access with helicopters in this area where we live. Like, oh, yeah, you said you wanted to talk about Mount Shasta as I soon as we started the that. show. Yeah, and then we did not. We but have, a lot of, have a, a lot of people a live in weird about. places yeah. yeah, they uh the, the Hilton's own a house up by a, a a little town called Weed, California, believe it or not. But they have right. this little house out in the mountains that's only accessible by an airstrip. That's a I don't it's not a private air. Well, maybe it is, but you can only access this house by a helicopter. So that's how rich these people are out in Northern California that own these places. But yeah, what did you want to talk about with the uh, Mount Shasta? Because that's something we've been working on doing for like six months now. Just on a side note, the Hiltons own a big place on Winnipesaukee, too. Oh, really? I believe yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I wanted to get together and talk to you guys about Mount Shasta because I know Jen talks a lot about it or used to back in the old days when we were all first getting into this gig. Yeah. Mount Shasta's uh, cool. Yeah. So I so I did a little bit of reading for it, uh, a reading about it, but I I was reading and I'm not going to say the name of the town because it's the town you live in. So I don't want to disclose oh. that to you. Everybody but knows. I was reading a, uh, this old newspaper article where this lady in your town was digging or something and found the skeleton of an eight foot tall giant. Hmm. Here? Yes. Huh. And I've tried we to actually go don't live in that town. Whatever town it is, it's not the town we live in now, I promise. Not now, yeah. We moved a little bit. We did move a little bit. <laughs> we live a little outside that town, so it's not a big deal. All right. So, so but I was giants. surprised when I saw that, that I had mentioned that to Joe, and Joe's like, oh, I never heard nothing about that. No. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. And then, of course, the government swooped in and took it, and that story went away. And mm. I tried. Oh, and was I that 2016? To... No, she found. No, this was back in the late 1800s. 
Oh, okay. So quite a bit ago. Okay. I found an article, I guess, written in 2016. That I'm was sorry. back when Ron was a little kid. I read the clickbait kid. and didn't finish the article, but I do see this now and I know what town you're talking about. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So Mao Shasta is really interesting. And I had discovered a few things about it. And in one of the, and I mean, not only do a lot of people disappear there, you know, in that uh, uh, David Politis, who does mm -hmm. the four, Missing 411 series. Yeah. He did a whole story about these hikers that were there that were all older and all knew each other about how one of their colleagues just absolutely vanished. No trace. And then there's a old, the old Indians because it's supposed to be a sacred place to the Native Americans, right? Mount Shasta is. And, and the Native Americans always had this myth and they always said, you can't go above the tree line. Because once you go above the tree line, that's all sacred land. You shouldn't even be there. And this is where a majority of these people go missing is above the tree line. But one of the most fascinating things I, I found out about it was that, and I can't remember the guy's name that come, came up with this theory, but back in the times of Atlantis, because we've all heard of the stories of Atlantis, right? And, and then and then recently in the last few years, of course, when we, you know, do research on whether the earth is flat or lands beyond the poles and all this other bullshit. We hear of this this civilization called Lemuria, right? Yeah. So how this story goes is that the Lemurians and the Atlanteans had this huge battle. And I guess it went nuclear. You know, pretty much like really bad. And the people of Atlantis went into Agartha, which is supposedly the the uh, civilization inside the hollow earth. That's where the Atlanteans went. And the Lumerians went in underground in Mount Shasta. Yeah, there's a whole I, I think I might have told you about this, but there's a whole fucking cult up there called the I am cult and it's based off of a uh, St. Germain. And I used yes. to do that okay, route yeah. for my job up, up in Mount Shasta city. Oh yeah. And they have a whole amphitheater. They have a temple, they have a reading room, they have a school. It's a big thing up there and they all wear purple for some fucking reason, but uh, they're, they, yeah, they're onto that belief system that the Lemurians live inside Mount Shasta and they're super tall and they're ancient and whatever. I don't know if any of them have ever met these people. I didn't ask them because I thought they were fucking weird at the time, but now I'm like, I don't know. I'll go check it out. What I find is interesting is that there's a lot of accounts of of uh, eyewitnesses saying they would actually see an opening appear near the summit of Mount Shasta and UFOs would fly in and out of that. Yeah, I've heard that one too. Yeah, well, it's all pretty interesting because how do we know, right? I mean, a lot of these mountains carry a lot of... Uh, like mysterious mysteries and mysterious happenings and tragic happenings. I mean, because Mount Shasta was an active volcano at one time, correct? Apparently it's still active, but I don't think it's, it plans on blowing its load anytime soon. Okay. Well, I think they said it's still active, but it's similar to Mount Fuji, which Mount Fuji in Japan was also considered sacred land. In in Mount Fuji was was a volcano, and it's Mount Fuji is also where they have the quote unquote suicide forest. Yeah, people go to commit suicide, but people go there and disappear as well. Very similar to Mount Shasta. Now yeah. we have we have an interesting thing happening in New Hampshire, which I probably shouldn't even say anything about, but it's something I'm working on. Recently, over this last winter, we've had two cases of hikers. Like in the last month, month and a half, two separate hikers decided that they were going to go hiking in the White Mountains on days that extreme weather was coming in. They went to these to go hiking. They got dropped off by family members. Totally unprepared, not the proper clothing, no provisions, nothing. And they end up dying on these mountains. There's something common. There's something common there. And it's something, it's not right. It just, to me, when I first heard the first story, I took it as, well, that was a bad mistake. She shouldn't have never done that. But then several weeks later, there's another almost identical case. Yeah. 
working on that. I, I think there's something funky going on there. Almost like, uh, is this section of the White Mountains now becoming the suicide forest of New Hampshire or of the United States? I, I saw, I don't know how reputable this map would be, but I saw a map overlaid with all the main uh, mysterious mountains like Mount Shasta and some other ones, and then with supposed underground bases or tunnels, and they all kind of match up with a lot of those big mountains and supposed tunnels and all these systems and shit, and it kind of overlays really nicely with, uh, it's almost like an underground interstate, it looks like, with entrances and exits. Ex ex exits? Exits. Exits. So Terry Lovelace was saying that too, that when he went camping in Devil's Den National Forest, that he forgot all of the things he meant to bring. Not everything, but they forgot. Uh, he forgot his camera. He wanted to take pictures. Just there's something about those areas where whatever's luring people there makes them forget things that they would need to stay alive or mm. to to capture that memory, you know, he forgot his camera. Some people forget their clothes or sleeping bag or tent or whatever it is. What I find interesting, like when people do that in New Hampshire, like New Hampshire mountains are known to be extremely dangerous in the winter. Like, like my father's cousins would come up from Delaware and climb Mount Washington every winter. Mm -hmm. These guys were professional mountain climbers. They would come to our house. My mom would give them a big high carb meal, spaghetti, you know, bread, whatever. And then the next day they would go up and they would climb, you know, spend a couple of days and climb Mount Washington in the winter. Mount Washington has the worst weather in all of like North America during the winter, right? The highest sustained winds ever recorded in the United States was on Mount Washington in the winter. No, thank Damn. you. That's where I broke my leg, Mount Washington. No, thanks. On oh, the way I, down. I remember that story. Yeah, <laughs> but it was in the summer because I'm not a fucking retard and I would never climb that in the winter. No offense okay, to your so, father's cousin. So it's dangerous to climb Mount Washington in the summer because it can be 85 degrees at the bottom of the mountain. You get to the top and you're literally freezing your ass off. Freezing, yeah. yeah. All right. So well, I know, something, feet odd, something odd is going on up there. It's something, I, it, it piques my interest. I'm going to look into it and maybe that'll be another show for the Wicked Planet. So oh, when no. I when I broke my leg, I never I've I don't think I've talked about this on the show. I broke my leg. And the person I was hiking with, I couldn't move. So I I was like, I stood up and I could feel that my leg wasn't connected to my foot. And I Ooh. said, just leave me. Go get help. Yeah, it was weird. I've never broken a bone. So I was like, go get help. It's fine. And it was 5 p.m., maybe six or seven. And the sun sets real quick there. So it was getting to be pitch black. And um. <laughs> So I said, just leave me. It's fine. It's no big deal. And they were like, no, I can't. And then we stopped for a minute because we were trying to figure out what to do. We had no cell service. It was getting to be nighttime. I mean, there was no sun, dusk, um, you know, you could barely see in front of you. And mm -hmm. we heard these whistling noises and it wasn't like Bigfoot or anything. It sounded like people to be really honest, but it was like, we could hear people talking, but it was moving around us. And that's when they were like, I'm going to carry you down the mountain now. We're leaving because it wasn't an animal. It sounded like people. And what I was thinking in my mind, I remember thinking it sounds like people who have a campsite or something nearby, but and it could have been, it could have been, I guess. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, we, uh, we were hiking the hardest trail though. I don't know how many campsites are off that. I forget what it's called now at this point, it's been 12 years, but it was really weird. The sounds that we remember, heard. Jen, Sam, a squatch will whistle and they will mimic human voices. That's it sounded like not English, but talking. And yes, that's that's exactly. how people sound when you're far away too. So I'm not saying it was fucking I, fast. Or anything. It could have been people. Numerous Bigfoot accounts in the White Mountains and not far from there. Like Weird, credible, yeah. incredible encounters. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. I just I love the whole Samasquatch. I love that. I know we hey where we live too we hear so many stories we haven't seen anything crazy at all but when we drive out to the west coast everywhere we drive through through Humboldt County and through the mountains and the trinities there's statues of Bigfoot there's signs everywhere like Bigfoot white water rafting or whatever what That's the, uh, what's the deal behind the Samasquatch thing I hear you say that all the time is that just the way you fucking say it or what yeah Buckley came up with that Oh, okay. It's like saying sandwich and yeah. Sasquatch. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it, Jen. So, so Sasquatch is going to make you a Sasquatch is going to make you a sandwich. And then, and then we got on that Buckley and I, and I think we were probably had a fucking buzz on when we were doing it. And then you think, Oh, really? No way. We'll just call him a Samasquatch. Does, so, do either one of you actually call a sandwich a sandwich? No. Good. Okay, you weird cool. homosexuals. We still, yeah. No. <laughs> no, we actually, uh, and Buckley can speak way more proper than I can, because uh, according to my wife, I'm a, I'm a hick. I have a hick. Oh, a you're hick. kind of a hick. That's fine, though. But, uh, you're a but very yeah, well-spoken uh, hick, if you're a hick. Yeah, well, thank you. But uh, I guess my accent is pretty strong. You know, Joe used to make fun of me all the time for that. No, I'm used to it now, though. Like, I don't even hear it anymore. I hear so many different accents right. now. So like, yeah. like all of my relatives. So it was just comforting I'll to me when we first you, met. But I don't notice it as much. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we're coming up on an hour and a half. I wanted yeah. to. Oh, shit. The opportunity to get together. Wait. Hell yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out. We haven't hung out in forever. Yeah, I know. And, you know, when you guys were one, you know, uh, other than going on Ryan's show, I don't even know how many times, but. You know, you guys, you guys were like the second show that I was ever on. So, so that's oh, really yeah. cool. Yeah. You were one of the first people we ever met in this, in this now big community, but it's growing all the time. You're like our OG it's podcast it's friend. Yeah. Yeah. So little G calls, little G calls any of my podcasting friends, right. The ones that I deal with a lot, you know, like you guys and Ryan or whatever, and if I'm talking on the phone or even Mark, I haven't heard from Mark in a while. Well, he texted me like a week ago, but, but anyways, I'll say, she'll go, who are you talking to when I'm on the phone? Cause she's nosy. She's wicked nosy. I'm like, oh, I'm talking to one of my podcasting friends. She goes, Oh, one of the podcast Kenny's. So, so that, so that's her generic name for any one of my podcast friends is that podcast you're a, po- a podcast Kenny. <laughs> yeah. Like it. that. It's, it's kind of funny. But anyways, well, Ron, uh, <laughs> tell everybody where they can find you and uh, Buckley and all the things that you guys do. OK, well, uh, I'm real easy to find uh, and I am going to be putting this show out on my feed as well, Joe. Uh, just all right. Heads up. But uh, but yeah, I'm easy to find on Instagram. Ron from New England. Come check that out. That's usually got some pretty cool stuff on there. Nice. And then uh, if you want to, you know, just go check out like show info go to the Wicked Planet podcast uh, page on Instagram as well. I am back on Twitter. Ooh. I am at Ron from NE. Come and check us out. And then we got the uh, Wicked Wicked, uh, podcast uh, chat on uh, Telegram. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So I bounce from my page to your page and back and forth. I go (laughs) back and forth. I have conversations with guys on your page. And then I'm over on my page, and then I see they're over there, so they follow me back and forth. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I nice. actually had a nice little chat with some of your. Oh, and Drew said to say hey. Oh, uh, hey Drew. Oh, it's cunt. boy cunt. Hey Drew. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, uh, Drew and I are going to be getting together. We're not. We haven't set a date yet, but we we're in uh, we're in the setup stage. I want nice. to get a chat with him. So yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. It took but, us a, a little while to schedule him because he's on a, such a weird time zone, but we finally got him locked in and did one with him a couple weeks ago. So that was yeah, cool. What's he like? Is he like five or six hours before you guys? No, it's like 18 plus hours from us. Oh, okay. So going the other way. I think so. Might not be so bad for I'm pretty me. sure. He's the next day for us. I think the international dateline is not far to the west of us. That shit can oh, so okay. it's a whole different day over there where he is. Oh, I did want to mention one thing before we get out of here. Corey Hughes, and if you've listened to our show, you know who Corey Hughes is. The JFK extraordinaire is finally releasing his definitive book. I think it's called A Warning from History, and you can pre-order it. And this is not a paid promotion. We're just friends. But it's, uh, I th- I'm going to fuck this up. It's buymeacoffee.com slash JFK book. You can pre-order it, and it's apparently huge. It has like 600 pages of just notes. So that's how big this book is. So wow. if you if you're interested in the JFK debacle, uh, that's the definitive analysis of that whole thing. So if you're interested, go get that. I but would Ron- be interested, in that, you know, because the Kennedys carry a lot of weight in New England. That's yeah. a New England family right there. I but, mean, with those new CIA was- drops, it's uh, opening up some new shit. Apparently, a lot, good info, a lot of give, good info coming out. But yeah, yeah. So thanks, guys. It's always nice. It's always a pleasure to see you and Jen. Of course, I always love Jen's hats. <laughs> this yeah. joke got me this for christmas it looks like all of her other hats i didn't even notice i've been married yeah. that long for her. it's very cool 
All right. So, yeah. So, uh, come in and listen to the Wicked Planet. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Alt Media United. If you don't do the smartphone thing, you go online and listen to it there. Just Google the Wicked Planet podcast. You'll find us. Same thing with Legit Bat. We're pretty easy to yeah. find at this point. Pretty Dude, much. We've been doing this for a couple years now. At least I have. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Weird. So, what a year and a half fish. Us two and a half. Oh, yeah. Two and a half. Yeah, I know, you, were, you, were, you guys were out before me. So, uh, um, April 1st will be uh, the start of our third year. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So so we're doing good. We're pretty happy with the numbers and we're just going to roll with it. Buckley and I have fun and it's cool when Sean comes on the show. And uh, last episode was fun with Kellen and Buckley sniping at each other through the whole fucking show. That was kind of funny. But uh, but yeah, so uh, be looking for more from the Wicked Planet and some different subjects, too. Hell yeah, Ron. Good nice. to see you, buddy. Thank you, dude. Uh, love you all. Everybody have a great new year. Uh, cheers. Happy- I wish I had a song to play that's like, you know, super like festive glass. or whatever. Yeah. I have my own, my, have my own little white Russian in my travel mug right here. I told you to get oh, a drink yeah. before the show. Good for you. All right, guys. Have a great night. We will uh, see you Sunday, actually. We're back on the schedule. Uh, no more breaks for now unless something happens. But yes, we will see you soon. <laughs>